Hey guys, it's me Sahar. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my April TBR. I haven't filmed one of these in a very long time and that's just because I haven't had the time to like actually dedicate to reading. Not that I have the time to do that in the month of April. It's actually the busiest month of the entire semester for me. So I really don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I am just so excited to read again. Like I finally feel that like burning passion to read and I just wanted to channel that in a video and just talk about some books that I've been wanting to get to for a while and that have just been on my mind. So we are going to talk about some books that I'm hoping I'll get to this month. If not, it's totally fine, but I am going to try to actually start consistently reading again and I'm really, really excited for it. So. Without further ado, let's chat about some books that I plan on reading in the month of April. So the first one is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was recently adapted into a, I think it's a Hulu TV show or maybe an Amazon Prime TV show, I don't know. But it was adapted on the screen and I am dying to watch it, but I obviously want to read the book first. I do have the audiobook for this from my library, which I've heard that the best way to experience this story is via audio. So I'm going to be listening to this. Hopefully I can get my hands on a copy before I pick it up because I would like to follow along, but if not, that's totally fine. I'm happy with the audiobook. I'm just so excited. I've heard nothing but great things about this book. Honestly, I don't really know much about it. I think, and this might just be a synopsis that I pull out of thin air, but I think it's about Daisy Jones and this band that she was in. And, and I think they might have had like a falling out and we're learning about it or like it's told through an interview or something. Clearly, I don't know much about this book, but I do know that I'm so excited to finally read it or I guess listen to it. I, I just, I can't wait. Next is another audiobook that I have on hold from my library and that is The Atlas Paradox by Olive e. Blake. I read The Atlas Six a couple months ago and I freaking loved it. I enjoyed that book so, so much. I loved the pretentious writing style. I loved all of the characters and just this like magical school training kind of academy setting. I absolutely devoured. I just loved all the drama and the politics that went into it and all of the kind of mystery surrounding each of the characters and their backstories and just kind of what was going on overall was so well done in my opinion. I just, I really, really enjoyed my reading experience with that one and I listened to that on audio and actually really really liked it. So I decided I would pick up the second book in the month of April via audio as well and based on how the Atlas Six left off I'm really really excited to see how this second book in the series kind of picks up. I have a lot of questions still like unanswered. I'm really really intrigued. I just I think the strongest point for the first book for me were the characters. I just think that the writing style being so pretentious and then the characters kind of being who they are. I just felt like everything blended so well and like so perfectly together. And I just think that all of the characters were so unique. There was never a moment in the book where I didn't know whose POV I was in or I couldn't like distinguish between the different characters because they all had such a unique voice. So I'm really excited for book two. I cannot wait and I just I feel like I'm going to absolutely fly through it even though it's like a relatively longer audiobook but I still I feel like I'm going to be able to pick this book up and not be able to put it down. Next is a continuation of one of my favorite middle grade series of all time, Keeper of the Lost Cities. This is book five, Lodestar. I believe there are nine books total in this series, so I am just over halfway through with once I complete this book. These books are really, really chunky, but the font is like massive and it's middle grade. So I usually fly through them relatively quickly, which is why I put this one on my TBR. But I can't wait to get to this one. I just, it brings me so much joy every time I jump back into this world because I love Sophie. And I just love all of the other characters. Like it's just such a like wholesome series, but it's also like dark and mysterious and there's still so much going on below the surface, especially for it being a middle grade. I just feel like it has so many layers. It has so much depth. And I think Shannon Messenger does a really, really good job of doing that in kind of a, a subtler or I guess a little bit more of a simpler way because of the 
targeted age group and targeted audience of the series. But if you don't know what this book is about, the first one, Keeper of the Lost Cities, follows our main character Sophie, who finds out that she's an elf and there are a lot of secrets um, surrounding like who she is and why she kind of looks different than all of the other elves. And basically she has to go to this elvish academy and leave her family behind, wipe their memories, and a lot goes down at this school. We're uncovering a lot about her past. And like I said, there's just so much more that goes into the story than just kind of the surface level school setting, little middle schooler trying to figure out what's going on. I adore, adore this series so much. I talk about it all the time on my channel, so I'm sure this comes as no surprise, but I'm really hoping to continue on with the series and make more progress in it and hopefully finish it by the end of 2023. I think I own pretty much all of the books in the series except maybe book seven, so I really, really don't have an excuse to not finish the series this year, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make some progress in the month of April. Next, we have Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. This is book one in the Books of Babel or Babel series. This is a series that Reagan over at Peru's Project talks about a lot. She speaks really highly of it, and I own the entire quartet, so I really don't know why I haven't picked it up yet, but I'm really, really excited to finally get started on this series. This one, we are following our main character, Thomas Senlin. He is recently married and he's on his honeymoon and his wife like mysteriously disappears and he essentially has to go into this tower to like look for her and this tower is filled with a lot of like magical components a lot of things are really weird and messed up and there's a lot of mysteries that he uncovers while he's in this tower looking for his wife so it's kind of like a blend of a mystery with these fantastical elements so if you're really into like thriller and mystery and like that kind of genre and you're trying to get into fantasy, I think this would be a good book to start with. Obviously, I don't know how well it does the blend of those two genres because I haven't read it yet, but if you are trying to get into fantasy or if you're a fantasy reader trying to get into mystery, I feel like this is going to be a good blend for you. So I'm really excited because I do love a good mystery story and I am trying to dive more into like thrillers and mysteries and just other genres this year and so I think this would be a great place to start for me because it does have you know my my love my OG true favorite genre of all time fantasy but we are still mixing in a little bit of other elements too so cannot wait to get to this one in the month of April and then the last book that is on my April TBR is one that I'm sure all of my friends watching this are very excited to hear me talk about and mention and just finally be reading, and that is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is the first book in the Kingdom of Noxia series? The Crowns of Noxia. I think that's how you pronounce it. Honestly, I don't know. I... Obviously, currently in the middle of this book, I'm just under halfway through, and I am annotating the crap out of this. So clearly, I'm really, really enjoying this book already. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate how my bookmark perfectly matches the cover of this book? Just a moment of silence. Just everyone just appreciate this because this is a matching moment, and then my tabs are a matching moment, and I just... This book is giving me so much joy and happiness. I am absolutely loving every second of this. I am annotating the crap out of this book and I'm just, I'm having a really, really fun time. So I am very excited to finish this in the month of April. This will definitely be the first book I pick up in the month and just finish it off. I feel like I'll just need like a solid Saturday to finish off this book and it's just... It's making me very, very happy. So I'm really glad that so far at least it's living up to the hype. But if you don't know what this book is about or what, <laughs> what this is, so this is a fantasy romance novel where we are following our main character, Oriya, and she was taken at a very young age by this like vampire king and he raised her as his own. So he's kind of like her adoptive dad. And now she is a little bit older and she has to compete in kind of these trials and they're very, very dangerous. And it's only really like other vampires from different houses that compete, but she's the only kind of 
human-esque person that is competing in these trials. So she's kind of like the underdog. People don't really think that she's going to survive and she has been training for this for a very long time and her father, her adoptive father, is obviously very, very powerful because he is the king of like their kind of vampire house and so people kind of know her and she has received like training from him so she is definitely someone that you don't want to underestimate but so far I'm really really enjoying this I am loving like the little enemies to lovers romance we have going on so far like I am I'm here for it I love the love interest like so much I feel like he is such like the bad boy but secretly has such a good heart or like not like such a good heart but is just there's so much more to him. Like I love the depth and I love like how much we're uncovering of him already. So I'm really excited to finish this book. I just, it's, it's bringing me so much joy and I just, I'm really happy. It's been a while since I've read a fantasy romance with like vampires. So that's cool. I'm really enjoying like learning about all of the lore and stuff. So anyways, this is not a book review. This is a TBR. So I will be reading this probably the first book I will finish in the month of April and I cannot wait. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I plan on reading in the month of April. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it to the end, leave a blue heart emoji because... I'm just, I'm really vibing with the blue right now. So leave that down below to let me know that you were here. But other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.